are joined now by Rick Tyler, the former spokesman for Ted Cruz's presidential campaign. He is now an MSNBC political analyst and comes to us from Washington, D.C. And here in the studio, Corinne Jean-Pierre, a senior advisor to MoveOn.org and a Democratic strategist who was a White House regional political director and deputy campaign manager for Martin O'Malley's presidential campaign. Uh, lady, gentlemen, <laughs> thank you for being here. Rick, I'm going to read something to you from Great New York Lydia. Times today about the potential down ballot implications of Donald Trump's war on the Republican Party, okay? Here's the sentence. The nightmare possibility for the party, that's your party, is that swing voters punish the party because of Mr. Trump. The anti-Trump Republicans stay at home, and Mr. Trump's base cast a ballot for him and then leaves the polls. So, how plausible do you think that scenario, nightmare scenario, is for your Republican Party? I think it's increasingly plausible. It wasn't for a while because the presidential campaign has gotten so much media attention that it's sort of been isolated. And the down ballot races have been going on and national media hasn't been paying much attention. Uh, but now that Donald Trump is in open war uh, with the Republican Party and its leadership, principally uh, Speaker Ryan, uh, I think it's going to, and, and of course this tape, because every uh, reporter is going to ask every candidate about the tape, uh, I think it has a potential to uh, yeah, to, to definitely hurt the ballot and definitely hurt the down ticket races. Although right now I would say, John, that we'll probably keep the Senate marginally and I don't really think we'll lose the House. The reason is I don't see a wave election. I don't see an attracting force getting behind Hillary Clinton uh, and, and overwhelming uh, the ballot box. And so I, I just don't see that it's going to be at this point, at, it, it's not, it's not going to have a great impact. Corrine, how worried uh, should the Clinton campaign be that, that Ryan's strategy, um, or, or the theoretical Ryan strategy, that um, Trump may lose, but it's about keeping the Senate in Republican hands to act as a check on Hillary Clinton? How, how feasible do you think that strategy is? Look, I mean, I, I agree with uh, Rick somewhat in the sense of, like, it's going to be very difficult to get the House, for the Democrats to get the House. There's about 30 seats that, that w they would have to pick up, which is just unlikely. But I think the Senate, we still have a, we still have a play there, right? The, the, if you look at states like even Florida, and there's a poll that came out over the weekend that showed that race tighten it up, I think, about three, four points. And so, so that's something to think about, too. But here's the thing. A month, for, for months now, we've been saying this is going to be a tight election. We've been saying that it's going to be single digits and it's not going to be a landslide. The polls that we are seeing this week has her double digits or high, like nine, nine, nine numbers. And so that's where we are right now. He's at 35, right? His ceiling was 40, 41. He couldn't even win with that. So what's happening is that all these down ballots have to be, are now attached to all of that. So, so these, sen these senators and congressional members have, who are still with him, him or have left, they're kind of in a trick box, right? If you if you've left him, you're losing the Trump, you're losing the Trump supporters. If you're with him, you have to take everything that comes with Trumpism. So here's the question I have for you: If you're a down ballot Democrat and you're in a in a House race that might be competitive under certain circumstances, or in a Senate race that is, what do you want the Clinton campaign to do? Obviously, you'd like them to spend some money, and you'd like yep. uh, priorities to spend money in your district or your state, but. Their strategy for a long time has been try to peel off Republicans to come over to Hillary Clinton, not focus on energizing the Democratic base. If you're one of those Democrats, what do you want them to do for you strategically? I think it's really important to energize the Democratic base. Absolutely. That's why it's important to have President Obama out, Michelle Obama, Vice President Biden, right? And Bernie Sanders, of course, right? And I think them being out there and, you know, speaking on her behalf is ex extremely important and will energize that base. Because without that, then you're going to have a problem. But here's the thing, right? What they're focusing on right now is voter registration, early voting program. We know when you have a strong field program, and you know this, John, you can move the needle between, you know, three to five percentage points. And 40 percent of the general electorate is going to vote early. That's how Obama won in 2008. That's how we won in 2012. So that is what, the, you know, that is what the, the campaign needs to really focus on. And that's what they're doing with their sur surrogates. Rick, Donald Trump has been talking a lot about a rigged election. Uh, some Republican officials have come out today and in recent days saying he needs to stop talking like that, that it could be detri detrimental for American democracy in the future. What are your feelings on it? Well, D Donald Trump says everything he loses is rigged, right? So if the debate goes wrong, it was rigged. Uh, my microphone didn't work. I couldn't hear the question in the earpiece. Uh, the, the moderators were unfair to me. It goes on and on and on. Uh, but look, I th Alex, by the way, it's great to see you. I've missed you. Uh, <laughs> it's it's been, to see you, it's been a It's been... Um, 
Look, I, I think this is now focused on post-election. Uh, they know they can't expand the base. The only thing they can do is now is scorched earth strategy. That's what they're doing to try to suppress the Clinton vote. But Donald Trump is an imperfect messenger to suppress her vote. So I don't know how much impact that's going to have. But I think after the election, they are going to consolidate an organization that's going to be anti-Hillary. That organization will be uh, very lucrative. Uh, and they're going to, we're going to be, well, you're seeing it now. The party is splitting. Right. It's basically splitting between um, what I would call the bright Bart wing of the party who believes win at all costs. It doesn't seem to have an underlying philosophy or I don't know what it is because it's at odds with a lot of Republican Party principles like free trade. Uh, then you have conservatives and then you have the establishment which represents the status quo. Will we go back to the establishment or will the conservatives finally figure out how to make conservatism an attractive message again Rick? and take over the party? So that's just going to be a big brawl. Rick, real quick, yes or no, is the election over? Presidential election over? Yeah, it's, it's, it's over. over. Is yeah. that presidential election Absolutely. Over? There's no path to 270 for Donald Trump. Why are we here? Democrat, <laughs> yeah, well, what are we doing? Somebody's got to pay the mortgage. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not going to be you. It's not going to uh, be.